Welcome to the Wardenburg Family Farm with Don and Brenda. What are we doing today? I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm making egg casserole. You want to help? That means I'm probably doing the dishes. That works for me. Well, the first thing we need to do is pick some spinach. It's a little chilly out, but at least the sun's out, and I'm pretty sure the spinach survived the zero degree temperatures. It's definitely colder than it looks. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so first we, we got to uncover here? it and get ready to pick it. All right. Take that one off. Yep. Ah, beautiful green spinach. Healthy, healthy, healthy. Now we'll just start picking the biggest leaves, okay? And leave the small ones, and then they'll get big. Have you ever picked spinach before? Absolutely. <laughs> Why is that not that. believable? Oh. I'm going to pick as much as I can. I'll have more than I need for the casserole, but I'll just freeze the rest. Well, now we're in the tunnel, and this is a whole different ball game. <laughs> it's January. And it's probably, what, 60, 65 in here? Oh, it's warm more than that. It's probably it's, 75. It's beautiful. And outside, it's probably 35 and windy. Well, you just saw us freezing our buns off out in the garden. Yeah. Yeah, this is bigger spinach because it's been getting warmer temperature, but oh, look at it all. There's a ton of it. It's just exciting to pick stuff in the winter. It's extra fun. I don't get the same thrill out of it that you do, though. <laughs> You're not a gardener at heart. Yeah. I am. Love the dirt. Love growing stuff. Love preserving it and love eating it. I love farming with the equipment. I think the equipment is half the fun. Yeah, you just like the equipment. Yeah. And I like to get my hands dirty. Well, if we're going to make egg casserole, I need to get some eggs. Don't have to go to the grocery store. Oh, good. They laid a bunch. Oh, it is a good day today. It's, it's been warmer. Yeah, warmer and the days are getting a little bit longer. So they'll pick up. My girls are good, aren't you girls? They knew I wanted to make egg casserole. Think that's it? I think that's it. They know that you. That one's a fake one, so I'd leave that one in there. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's get cooking. You're my buddy, huh? Buddy likes egg casserole too. Oh, Buddy likes a lot of stuff. <laughs> but he likes the attention, likes to be loved. Don't you? He's not the only one around here. No. <laughs> what kind of casserole are you making today? I'm actually making one. It's called Eggs Florentine in the cookbook. We call it spinach and feta because it has spinach and feta in it. So uh, before I start though, I actually start preheating the oven. And I'm not gonna throw my eggshells out. I keep them and I bake them. These are the ones I've saved for the last week. And I'll put all these in there too. I save the eggshells, I bake them, and then I grind them up. And some I feed back to the chickens for calcium and some I put in the garden, like especially tomatoes need calcium. So that's the first thing I do. The eggs don't get any fresher than that, do they? Nope. Wonderful, fresh, farm-raised eggs. How many eggs go in there? I'm making a double batch, so it calls for a dozen. One single batch is six, so I only needed a dozen. And my girls gave me enough. Is this a complicated recipe that you have to attach, or folks will just I can right attach it, it, but I'll give you the recipe. I don't always follow it exactly. I kind of just sometimes use whatever I have. So I'll give you the recipe, and you can take it from there. Easy enough, you think that I could do it? Maybe. Fluent. <laughs> now, the original recipe doesn't call for bacon, but face it, bacon makes everything better. My kids and grandkids are more likely to eat it if it has bacon in it. And 
I like it better too. <laughs> that offsets the spinach. Yeah, true. But you don't even know the spinach is in there, right? Right. You eat it oh, all yeah. the time. I love it, seriously. Now, rather than frying the bacon and then crumbling it, for me, it's easier if I just go ahead and slice it and cook it in little bits. That is so much easier. You got all the shortcuts down. I like to cook, but I like to do it easy. If there's an easier, lazier, faster way to do it, that's the way I want to do it. I want them pretty little bites because I don't want big chunks of bacon in there. Just little tiny bits of it and the flavor of the bacon. Sounds good to me. It is delicious. This is one of our favorites. Now this is the spinach we picked out of the garden. Now I am lazy, but I don't like stems <laughs> for spinach, so I do kind of tear the stems out. And then I'll wash it, chop it up, and I actually fry the spinach a little bit in the bacon grease after the bacon's done cooking. Softens it up and gets even more of that bacon flavor. <laughs> We're not going for low fat here. <laughs> Ooh, I hear the bacon sizzling. It's a sizzling. See what you got. And I don't throw out the stems. The stems go to the chickens. That's amazing to have fresh January. Yeah. Beginning of January, fresh spinach right from the garden. Can't beat it. See, this there's there's my cute little chicken bucket Donnie got me for Christmas. All right. And the chickens will enjoy that? The chickens will enjoy it very much. They need their greens, and this time of year, there's not that many greens to get. So, I might not like the stems, but they do. So is that the thing I hear making the racket every morning when I'm upstairs in bed? Trying to <laughs> yes, eat? it is. We have a big salad spare because we sell greens at the farm stand. Yeah, and this is what he hears. It means it's time to get out of bed. Now that's not your big one though. No, I actually have one about twice this size. If I have a ton of greens, I get the big one out. But it really gets the moisture on the stuff. <laughs> to sleep through that, you know. <laughs> oh, I feel so bad for you. Nice, clean, fresh spinach. Now the bacon's almost done. Pretty much done. Yep. Now I'll drain most of the grease off of it. And I'll just leave a little bit in the bottom of the pan to cook up the spinach a little bit. Is that strainer? Yep. Just a metal strainer. And that's just my oven thing. It's preheated. Nice. Now I just need to chop the spinach up a little bit. It's going to be a lot of spinach powder. Yes, it'll be wonderful. You won't know what it's in. I'll just sneak it into all kinds of stuff. You'll be getting spinach nutrition. You know, I just thought of something. What? When Tiff, our daughter-in-law, who's a nutritionist, you guys talk about this as a spinach casserole. And yeah. when you talk to me and the kids, you say, hey, why don't you have some bacon casserole? No, I do not. I just say egg casserole. <laughs> <laughs> you know the spinach is in there because it's all green. I know. I'm not sneaking it into you. Whoa, that's right. a lot of bacon, a lot of uh, spinach. It cooks down. It always looks more when it's raw. And then it cooks down to nothing. You'll see. Trust me. Okay. But now I'll cook it just a little bit in that little bit of bacon grease in the bottom of the pan just to kind of get softened up, wilted, and then I'll be ready to go into casserole. Bacon makes even spinach good, doesn't it? See, look, it already breaks down to nothing. It cooks down to about half to a third of what you put in there when it wilts. It does look appealing with a little bit of bacon grease on it. <laughs> bacon makes everything better. Now, I haven't, some people eat bacon ice cream. I don't know, I haven't developed yeah, a way to appreciate that. 
I don't know. I don't know. I guess you can't knock it till you've tried it, and I haven't tried it yet. It just hasn't sounded good enough to try. So this is not low fat? No. As you'll see, the next ingredients to go in are cottage cheese, Swiss cheese, feta cheese, and butter. Nice. See, but you don't notice the spinach. Now this is nice. Since he's in the kitchen and near me, I'm putting him to work. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's one of the hardest things about this casserole, grating all that cheese. That's where the big muscles come in. Good job, dear. Okay, now comes all the low-fat stuff. I'm joking. <laughs> Cottage cheese. And the recipe calls for 16 ounces, but I kind of fudge that here and there. And then all the nice Swiss cheese that he grated. Remember, this is a double batch, so there's a lot of cheese. Um, and it calls for Swiss or mozzarella. I have this little bit of mozzarella that was left over from a pizza or something, so I don't want it to go to waste, so it's going in there. And then feta. And that, they say about, I think it's a pound, but that's up to you too, how much you want to put in. Can you tell I don't follow the recipes? Always comes out good though. And it's different every time. It's a little bit different each time. We always have feta cheese around. We love feta on a lot of stuff. And of course, butter. Melted butter. I'm gonna mix that all up. And after that's all mixed up, I'll stir in the spinach and the bacon. And I don't think this is gonna be a super spinachy one. As long as it has enough bacon. No, I think we're good. Enough other good stuff too. Plus the farm fresh eggs. And the spinach. Bacon. Now, I never salt this when I make it because it has the bacon in it. I'm afraid it'll get too salty. Everybody can salt it when they eat it if they want more salt. But the two things I do put in are nutmeg and chipotle chili pepper. I mean, it calls for nutmeg and a little bit of some kind of pepper, but I love chipotle chili pepper. I put it in like in so many things I make. And again, I don't measure. I'll give you the measurements they say, but it's all personal preference. And nutmeg might sound like a funny thing for an egg casserole, but it's really good. I'm gonna dang some chili pepper soon. Hit the bottom of the barrel. There we go. This is really a good egg casserole. Now I'm gonna do it in two nine by 13 casseroles. Give it a quick shot of olive oil spray. And pour it in. Hopefully evenly. And you can actually decide, like if you use a bigger pan than this, it'll come out a little bit thinner. This comes out about the thickness I like it. I mean, I've already done three and four batches at a time and done a bunch of egg casserole, but a bunch of nine, 13 by nine pans. And just spread it out. And it'll be ready to go in the oven. So do you have the oven preheated? The oven's preheated. Remember, my eggshells are in there. So I'm going to take the eggshells out and put these in. I don't know if I told you why I bake the eggshells. It kills any bacteria that might be on them. Because? Well, I don't want to give the chickens So the chickens stuff. eat them? Yeah, some of them, and some I put in the garden. So either way, I want them clean. And when they're baked and dried like that, they just, I put them in the food processor. They grind up into nothing, a little powder. So I can add it to the chicken's food if they think they need more calcium, or else I give it to them to, you know, take it their own wish. Now, it goes for one hour. Timer, one hour. That's at 350. And after these cool down, I can grind them up. Now it's just wait, and Donnie can do dishes. <laughs> I knew that was coming.
Okay, the moment of truth. <laughs> now to see if you like it. It's tasty. A professional taste tester. Yeah, you're good at it, babe. It I'm always scrumptious. a bit of a, a skeptic when it comes to kale and spinach and things cooked. I love spinach in a salad raw, but it's usually pretty good. Oh, it looks, looks perfect. Okay. Mm, nice consistency. Is it too hot? Am I going to burn my... I don't know. You might. Mm. Thumbs up? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, we can taste the spinach and <laughs> the bacon. See, it's all worthwhile then. <laughs> Thanks, Brenda. Now, one thing I like doing with this casserole, I cut it into little squares, and then I'll freeze them on cookie trays, parchment lined cookie trays, individually, so they're not gonna stick together. And then after they're all frozen, I stick them in freezer bags. So any morning we wake up and we want to have egg casserole for breakfast, we just grab a square out of the freezer, stick it on a plate, microwave it, and voila, scrumptious breakfast. And it's very easy. <laughs> so if you make it, I hope you enjoy it. And you can enjoy it many, many, many mornings. So thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Brenda, what's for breakfast? Egg casserole. Come on down.